Hi, I'm Greg Johnson with resourcesforlife.com and this is a training video to show the steps that are involved in setting up a Windows XP computer from scratch and this is something that's been asked a lot uh, by viewers who want to know a little more about how to configure a system. In addition to showing you how to set up a Windows XP computer from scratch, I also want to provide at the end of this uh, a tutorial on how to use um, Norton Ghost 2003 which is an imaging program, works well for older computers and also uh, for newer computers there's a product that is called Acronis True Image Home Edition. There's a 2010 version and now a 2011 version. They work about the same. So anyway, that's what this training video is going to be about. I may have to do this in a series of videos that are uh, 10 minutes or less because that's a, a YouTube limitation. Um, but anyway, this is the beginning of it. And from here on out, I'll probably show you mostly screenshots. So it's going to get a little boring, but if you follow along, I think you'll find it useful. Thanks. I'm going to be working with a Dell notebook computer, and you can see the original uh, install disk here. It's actually uh, Windows XP Pro Service Pack 1. This is a Latitude D600, you can see. And I'm going to start up the computer by pressing the power button here and with Dell uh, it's the F12 key here that you'll see gives us a boot menu and so if I press F12 it says preparing one time boot menu and now I can push the uh, eject button on the side here uh, you can see to open up the CD drive get that CD in and meanwhile on screen what I have is this uh, boot up screen and so you can see how you can move with here the arrow keys on the keyboard you can move up and down and choose the right option on this boot up screen. I'm going to choose CD DVD. You'll hear the CD spinning up and at some point it's going to say press a key to boot from CD so you want to press maybe the space bar and then at this point uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording of the video and come back a little later because it's going to take a long time for Windows XP to start up and load all of the uh, drivers. So eventually after those drivers load we're going to get to a screen like this one Windows XP Pro welcome to setup and uh, at the bottom there's some options here enter to continue or we can repair so I'm going to go ahead and press the uh, enter key here and we're going to continue and I'm going to pause the video until we're at the next step. So the next screen is this license agreement um, and down at the bottom we can press the F8 key it says to go ahead and agree so I'm going to push F8 here and agree to the license and then after loading some uh, it says any files etc we come to this screen and here the Windows setup will be showing us whatever hard drives and partitions it finds for a clean installation now this is obviously a video for advanced users, okay, and, and the presumption is you have everything backed up, right? So don't do this to anybody's computer unless you want it to be totally uh, just, you know, lost as far as data goes. But anyway, down here again, an option to repair or um, escape not to repair. So I'm going to press escape, and now we're getting the screen here where we can actually view the partitions that are in the system, the hard drive, and then down here at the bottom, you'll see an option to delete the partition. Press the letter D. So that's what I'm going to do. I want to make sure we're getting a really clean installation here. And it, it says, uh, you know, are you sure you really want to continue and do this? So uh, press Enter to continue. So yes, I'll go ahead and press Enter to continue with that. And then again, a confirmation message um, down at the bottom. It says, um, press the letter L on the keyboard to go ahead and confirm and delete this partition. So you can see the message there. I'm going to press L. Now we have deleted the partition and we're ready to begin. So we could um, go through kind of a manual process, choose the letter C and create a partition or just press Enter to begin installing. And then if we do that, if we go ahead and press Enter, Windows will assume kind of the default settings for the partition. So I'm going to press Enter. So it's created a partition. It's not formatted yet and I want to go ahead and format it. I'm going to choose the quick option. You can choose the lower option. It's slower. It's more comprehensive. I think it does a little bit of diagnostic on that hard drive just to make sure everything's okay, but I'm going to choose that top option. Um, and I, I'm doing that with the arrow keys here, up and down. 
And so I've, I've chosen the top option and then I press enter to continue. And now comes the waiting process. Um, not so long now since I chose the quick format, uh, but longer if you chose the full format. I'm going to pause the video till we get to the next step. I didn't have to press anything to continue at this point. It's going through some uh, a process essentially to get the drive set up and prepared for Windows and then beginning to copy some files. So I'm just kind of watching it continue and uh, just wanted to comment that you know it had gone through a couple of screens here but it's still progressing and I'll pause the video until we get to the next uh, stage of the setup. Alright, so up until this point what's happened is the computer completed some installation steps and restarted and so now it's starting up in what looked like a Windows screen there but actually it's still Windows setup and you'll see the first screen that comes up here gives us sort of a step-by-step -step guide to what's happened so far with the green dots and uh, what's coming up next. So we're going to be installing Windows next. Estimated about 39 minutes here it says uh, based on this computer's processor speed and other factors. So I'm going to pause the video at this point until there's more uh, interaction requested. After a short while you'll get this dialog box here asking you to go ahead and uh, begin the process of setting the region and language options. So um, if you want to customize those you can. I'm just going to click on next here and then you can put in the name. Now if you're an IT person, a uh, computer support person, or you do this kind of thing regularly, it may be useful to have a clean image, a clean backup of this computer that doesn't have any kind of personalization to it so that you could use it later if somebody says, hey, I also have you know, a Dell Latitude D600, mine crashed, I need it set up. Well, if you have a backup without any personalization, you can go ahead and restore from that, and then you know, that'll be useful. So um, instead of putting in, let's say, the name of the person you are doing this for, put in something like computer uh, user, and you can leave the organization blank, and then go ahead and click Next. Now the computer name, in this case, you'll see it says computer-yrpl1 or li1. I'm guessing that is the Dell service tag number, which is like a serial number. And uh, go ahead and just leave that name as it is. Um, that's useful to make that name unique. And then here for the administrator password, kind of a standard um, that people use is A-D-M-I-N. Um, you know, if you're concerned about security, of course, you know, this computer now you know what the password is, right? Because I just told you. And that's also, as I say, a default used by other computers. Um, the fact is that this login user account is generally hidden from people, but it is a good idea to go ahead and change that password later if you really want your computer to be secure. Um, but for now, we're just going to use that. So I'm going to press Next. And then uh, we go ahead and make sure the time zone is set correctly, in my case central time, and the uh, date and time it looks like is accurate, so we're going to go ahead and click next. And the process continues, and now we're at a point where um, it says it's you know installing some network settings. At this point, it would be a good idea for me to go ahead and have a network cable plugged in, um, unless I'm concerned about having you know some sort of viruses and worms attacking this computer which you do hear stories of those kinds of things happening especially with in this case Windows XP Service Pack 1 a lot of folks don't have the luxury of having you know Service Pack 2 or 3 on a CD for reinstalling because all you've got are your original disks and so the concern then is you know the vulnerabilities and uh, you know hacker capabilities of those those older computers are easier to break into um, the what are called exploits that was the word I was looking for um, so in a situation like that you want to be careful maybe not to hook up to the network just yet until you really need to um, it helps if you're behind a firewall so that your computer isn't immediately visible out on the internet so if you're behind a router that's helpful but anyway, here as you can see, it says setup will complete in approximately 27 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video at this